Fred? You don't want to know what I've just seen. It's Mountain Devil. <laughs> Mountain Devil! You've been having too much of this moonshine. You want a little snow? What do they look like, Fred? They have horns. <laughs> Was it a boy or a girl, Fred? <laughs> Blasted it. <laughs> oh, <woo! laughs> The animal fell into a ravine. Its body was never recovered. The miners slept off the events of their day. Deep in Bigfoot Territory, Episode 3 Ape Canyon and Mount St. Helens This is a Squatch Mafia documentary. Ape Canyon and Mount St. Helens Mount St. Helens, an active volcano located in Skamania County, Washington State, in the Pacific Northwest, is a notorious hotspot in Bigfoot lore. From the ancient days of native mythology, to the infamous Ape Canyon attack, to the time of the great eruption of 1980, until today the area is filled with Bigfoot legends, stories, and sightings. Mount St. Helens, 52 miles northeast of Portland and 98 miles south of Seattle, is situated in the western part of the Cascade Range, next to Mount Hood and Mount Rainier. The mountain takes its English name from that of the British diplomat Lord St. Helens, a friend of explorer George Vancouver, who surveyed the area in the late 18th century. The volcano is part of the Cascade Volcanic Arc, a segment of the Pacific Ring of Fire. Dense forests cover the lower region of Mount St. Helens, consisting of Douglas fir, Western Hemlock, Pacific Silver fir and Mountain Hemlock. The mammals of the area include elk, deer, black bears, and mountain lions. Mountain goats inhabited higher elevations of the peak, although their population was eliminated by the 1980 volcanic eruption. Historically the region around Mount St. Helens was inhabited by various native tribes, such as the Cowlitz tribe the Yakama Nation and the Chahalas tribe. The historic lifestyle of these tribes was deeply connected to their natural environment and was shaped by their respective geographic locations and resources. They mainly lived a nomadic life of hunting, gathering, and fishing. Long before any written Bigfoot accounts the indigenous peoples of the Pacific Northwest had oral traditions and stories about similar creatures in their mythology. 
Bigfoot has been a part of the oral traditions and folklore of all Native American tribes in the Pacific Northwest since many generations and centuries, including the folklore of the Yakama, Chahalas, and Cowlitz of Washington State. These descriptions often refer to large and hairy, human-like beings that dwell in the forests and mountains. These creatures can vary in nature, from being perceived as largely benign forest spirits to more menacing and dangerous entities. The creature appears in many traditional stories and legends and is portrayed as elusive, mysterious, dangerous, and powerful. The character of Bigfoot in this legends ranges from protector and guardian of the forest and the wildlife to evil spirit and man-eating giant, that abducts females and steals livestock. Also in some of these stories the creature is portrayed as extremely territorial and might defend its territory aggressively. Generally it is seen as an entity that has to be feared and respected and left undisturbed in its habitat. These accounts and stories likely date back many generations and centuries, if not thousands of years, within the oral traditions of these communities. Despite the vast age of the native mythology the first modern westerners learned about the stories and legends of wildmen and forest giants since the late 18th century, with first documented records coming from the Pacific Northwest and the Canadian wilderness around 1810. In the 1890s miners and prospectors in the Pacific Northwest began to tell ghost stories of mountain devils, mysterious creatures stalking or attacking lone prospectors and hunters camping in the wilderness alone at night. The area of Mount St. Helens was first put on the map of the research of Bigfoot, a term that first would be coined more than 30 years later, in 1924. In summer of 1924 one of the most notorious, legendary, and violent of all encounters in Bigfoot lore occurred at the slopes of Mount St. Helens and would later become known as the Ape Canyon attack. Ape Canyon is a gorge along the edge of the Plains of Abraham, on the southeast shoulder of Mount St. Helens. The gorge narrows to as close as 8 feet at one point. The name alludes to the events of the summer of 1924. In August of 1924 a group of five prospectors, consisting of Fred Beck, Gabe Lefevre, John Peterson, Marion Smith, and Smith's son Roy, stumbled out of the woods below Mount St. Helens, shaking and glassy-eyed, to tell of seven-foot-tall ape-like animals or ape-men attacking and nearly killing them. The group had already been prospecting for six years in the Mount St. Helens and Lewis River area in southwest Washington and had from time to time come across large bipedal tracks by creek beds and springs. The men, as most prospectors of the region, were aware of the legendary tales of mountain devils haunting the region. In August of 1924 the men were working at a gold claim in the wilderness at the slopes of Mount St. Helens, near a deep canyon, where they had built a small cabin for their gold hunting forays. Later they reported that they had already been hearing noises in the evenings at the cabin for about a week prior to the attack. They described shrill peculiar whistlings in the evenings as well as tree knocks and a booming dumping sound, just like something was hitting itself on the chest. They described whistles coming from one ridge and then hear an answering whistle from another one. The men were already spooked and unnerved over the nocturnal sounds and decided to leave the place as soon as possible. They claimed they were working eight miles from Spirit Lake when they first encountered four giant animals moving through the forest with erect human-like strides, covered with long black hair. The men estimated each animal weighed about 400 to 500 pounds. In the evening, as Fred Beck was leaving the cabin to get water from a spring, he saw what he described as a hairy creature about a hundred yards away on the other side of the little canyon, standing by a pine tree. The creature dodged behind the tree and poked his head out from the side of the tree. The creature, he estimated, 
must had been about seven feet tall with blackish brown hair. Beck took three shots at the creature, which was running fast and upright about 200 yards down the canyon before it disappeared from view. The violence proved a mistake. That night the men were awakened around midnight when huge stones began clomping against the outside of their cabin. Then they heard and felt giant bodies slamming against the walls and door. The ape men were seeking revenge. The beasts eventually tore a hole in the roof, allowing them to target the men by throwing rocks at them. One of the rocks struck Fred Beck, rendering him unconscious for nearly two hours. The attack continued the remainder of the night with only short intervals between. A most profound and frightening experience occurred when one of the creatures close to the cabin reached an arm through the chinking space of the cabin walls. Finally the sun began to come up, which prompted the animals to break off their attack and slip away. The men decided to take their chance and ran out of the woods. Tales of giant ape men weren't exactly new to the area. Hunters, lumberjacks, and prospectors had seen massive footprints now and again over the years and the stories of the mountain devils were well known in the region, also the Native American stories of forest giants and wild tribes in the wilderness were known to the most white settlers in the area. But few people seriously worried about the possibility of huge unknown creatures being out there in the forest. That changed when the gold hunters returned to civilization that summer day in 1924. The dramatic story of their battle with large human-like beasts was irresistible and thus hard for people to dismiss. Various newspapers from Oregon and Washington state reported the events at Mount St. Helens and wrote articles in which the prospectors were interviewed. Also other locals and native tribe members were interviewed, a Cowlitz tribe member told reporters about peculiar creatures the tribe's elders had often spoken about. These creatures were described as between 9 and 10 feet tall, correspondingly large in stature and their bodies covered with long hair. But native legends about giant ape-like creatures in the forests and mountains of the Pacific Northwest were not exactly what the public of the time cared about. The term Bigfoot wasn't even coined for more than 30 years later and it was still over 40 years until two rodeo cowboys would record what would be later become known as the Patterson-Gimlin film, shot in Northern California in 1967. So the attack at Ape Canyon was forgotten by the larger public until the late 60s. Today the Ape Canyon story of Fred Beck and his group of prospectors is one of the classics of Bigfoot lore. Fred Beck's book I Fought the Apeman of Mount St. Helens is also one of the early classics of Bigfoot research. Here is an interview with Fred Beck from the 1972 classic documentary Bigfoot Man or Beast. Join Squatch Mafia at Patreon to watch the entire documentary and tons of other Bigfoot encounters and documentaries. In 1924, Fred Beck and four other miners were in a cabin in the backwoods located in Washington State, near St. Helens. There were four or five creatures who approached the cabin during the night and proceeded to harass the miners by throwing rocks and pounding on the walls and doors of the cabin. You know, they was big, big shoulders and small hips and hairy. And they was, I'd call them a black turned brown by the sun. Outside hair, that's what I would tell, call them to be. And muscular. And they looked like they were about eight, nine foot tall. I have no way to tell. Another you. miner and prospector. While the story of the attack at Ape Canyon was forgotten by the public for decades, the legends of hairy forest giants and wild men lingered on and grew in the Pacific Northwest. The next widely documented event at the slopes of Mount St. Helens that is linked to Bigfoot happened in August of the year 1963, as a man named Jim Carter disappeared during a climbing trip with his friends. Various newspapers and journals covered the disappearance, 
search parties consisting of 50 to 100 persons searched the area of Mount St. Helens for weeks. But neither the disappeared man nor his equipment or his remains ever were found. Various articles from the Longview Times and the Oregon Journal detailed the circumstances of the disappearance. Here is an excerpt from a 1963 Longview Times article, entitled Ape Canyon Holds Unsolved Mystery, that is covering the case. Carter's complete disappearance is an unsolved mystery to this day, declared Bob Lee, a well-known Portland mountaineer. On the way down the mountain, Carter left the other climbers at a landmark called Dog's Head, at the 8,000-foot level. He told them he would ski around to the left and take a picture of the group as they skied down to the timber line. That was the last anyone saw of Carter. The next morning searchers found a discarded film box at the point where he had taken a picture. From here, Carter evidently took off down the mountain in a wild, death-defying dash, taking chances that no skier of his caliber would take unless something was terribly wrong or he was being pursued. He jumped over two or three large crevasses and evidently was going like the devil. When Carter's tracks reached the precipitous sides of Ape Canyon, the searchers were amazed to see that Carter had been in such a hurry that he went right down the steep canyon walls. But they did not find him at the bottom. We combed the canyon, one end to the other, for five days. Sometimes there were as many as 75 people in the search party. After three weeks the search was called off. We finally came to the conclusion that the apes got him, Lee told our reporter seriously. Since the early days of documented Bigfoot stories and encounters the region around Mount St. Helens stayed a hotspot for sightings and track findings for decades. And tales of the legendary wood ape, the Sasquatch, always remained present in the Pacific Northwest. But the tone of the stories from Mount St. Helens has changed since the early 80s, now not only featuring giant hairy beings but also shadowy government figures, mysterious helicopter evacuations, the military, and more. The day this new elements were introduced to the Bigfoot lore was, to be exact, the 18th of May 1980. rising from deep within the volcano rips open the mountainside, toppling entire forests, scorching everything in its path. On May 18, 1980, an earthquake of magnitude 5.1, triggered a massive collapse of the north face of the mountain. It was the largest known debris avalanche in recorded history. The magma in St. Helens burst forth into a large-scale pyroclastic flow that flattened vegetation and buildings over an area of 230 square miles. A total of 3,900,000 cubic yards of material was transported 17 miles south into the Columbia River by the lava and mud flows. For more than nine hours, a vigorous plume of ash erupted, eventually reaching 12 to 16 miles or 20 to 27 kilometers above sea level. The plume moved eastward at an average speed of 60 miles per hour with ash reaching Idaho by noon. 
Ashes from the eruption were found on top of cars and roofs the next morning as far away as Edmonton in Canada. 24 megatons of thermal energy were released and nearly a cubic mile of material was ejected during the eruption. 57 people were killed. It is estimated that about 7,000 large animals such as deer, elk, and bears were killed and tenth of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of small animals died. It was the deadliest volcanic eruption in the history of the United States. The landscape of Mount St. Helens was changed forever. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the National Guard were called upon to help in the rescue and recovery operations. As the story goes, while the rescuers worked hard to recover the bodies of deer, elk, bears and other animals, it is said that they also came across the bodies of one or more Sasquatch. These bodies were set aside by military personnel, covered with tarps and guarded by armed men, and witnesses were warned to keep quiet. But over the decades the story became so widespread across the military and the local helpers of Mount St. Helens that it was promoted in various books, articles, and magazines on Bigfoot. Even Freedom of Information Acts were filed to see if there was an official report, the response was quite predictable and uninformative. There were no documented reports of Bigfoot or Sasquatch carcasses and there were no projects to attempt to locate and or recover any bodies. But the stories, that are of course nearly impossible to verify, go even further. Not all the Sasquatch found on Mount St. Helens were dead. There are anonymous reports from soldiers and local helpers as well that speak of rescue missions to find injured or dead Sasquatch in the devastated region. Other anonymous witnesses speak of giant cloaked figures that were brought into military camps at night to get treatment in the medical tents. Also high-ranked government or military officials were observed at the scene, giving orders concerning the transport or medical treatment of the alleged Sasquatch. In most versions of the story, the rescuers completed their missions and moved on, without ever finding out what happened to the beings involved. Some accounts indicated that the beings were relocated to other parts of the Cascades, while others say that the beings were given a home on a military base, maybe Joint Base Lewis McCord, which encompasses over 86,000 acres of mostly forested terrain in the South Puget Sound region. Tons of famous Bigfoot photos and videos have allegedly been recorded in the wider area around Mount St. Helens in the last decades, also coming from Mount Hood, Mount Rainier, and the Blue Mountains. The most prominent clips from the area might be the Marble Mountain Bigfoot video and the legendary Freeman footage, recorded by Paul Freeman in the Blue Mountains in 1990. You can find this HD version of the Freeman footage at the Squatch Mafia YouTube channel, join Squatch Mafia at Patreon to watch the complete Marble Mountain Bigfoot video and tons of other Bigfoot encounters and documentaries. In September 2000, one of the most famous Bigfoot tracks was discovered in Gifford Pinchot National Forest, around 13 miles west of Mount St. Helens. It was discovered in a remote area near the Washougal River, a place where various Bigfoot encounters had been reported over the years. Known as the Skookum Cast, 
The cast includes not only the impression of what is believed to be the creature's buttocks but also hairs and plant debris. Some researchers believe that the details in the cast made it a compelling piece of evidence. The Skookum cast was subjected to scientific examination, including analysis by experts in various fields. Some of the analyses suggested that the cast might show anatomical features consistent with a large unknown primate. The term Skookum comes from the Chinook language, and means strong or powerful. Bigfoot researchers like Dr. Jeff Meldrum and Dr. Grover Krantz have examined the cast and believe it to be authentic. Today the Skookum cast remains a subject of debate, it has never been debunked and the animal responsible for the cast has never been identified. However, the legends of the ape men of Mount St. Helens have persisted over many decades. More recently documented stories and track findings from the Mount St. Helens area come from 2021. On October 17 of 2021 a motorist in Washington state photographed and reported large footprints near Mount St. Helens. Only a few days later, on October 22, the BFRO documented a Bigfoot sighting in Stevens County, Washington. The BFRO report states that a Bigfoot was seen 25 miles north of Spokane. Multiple witnesses saw an 8-foot-tall hairy and massive creature in the evening hours of October the 22nd in the forests north of Spokane. The creature disappeared into the forests before any photos or videos were taken. So, the wider area around Mount St. Helens, with places like Mount Hood, Mount Rainier, Ape Canyon, and the Blue Mountains stays a notorious hotspot for Bigfoot sightings and encounters. Please hit the like button if you have enjoyed this video on Sasquatch at Mount St. Helens and the attack at Ape Canyon, deep in Bigfoot territory. Subscribe to the Squatch Mafia channel at YouTube for more videos on Bigfoot, Sasquatch, and cryptozoology. Join Squatch Mafia at Patreon for tons of extra content, Bigfoot documentaries, and encounter videos. Thank you for Squatching.